Truly the Lord has borne our infirmities and he has carried our sorrows. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to our celebration of Mass today. Um, I'm celebrating a Mass in time of pandemic. It was a Mass that was released from the Vatican just um, yesterday, I think, or the day before. So I'm celebrating those, those prayers during the course of this Mass, remembering everybody, all of us, who are affected by this, this terrible crisis. Also, it's the National Day of Prayer for victims of abuse, of all kinds of abuse. So we're remembering them, particularly in our prayers this day. And now to prepare ourselves to celebrate this, this, uh, this Mass, we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress. In faith we pray, look with compassion on the afflicted, grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strengthen to healthcare workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love so that together we may give glory to your holy name, to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear so many disparaging me, terror from every side, Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All those who used to be my friends watched for my downfall. Perhaps he will be seduced into error. Then we will master him and take our revenge. But the Lord is at my side, a mighty hero. My opponents will stumble, mastered, confounded by their failure. Everlasting, unforgettable disgrace will be theirs. But you, Lord of hosts, you who probe with justice, who scrutinize the loins and heart, let me see the vengeance you will take on them, for I have committed my cause to you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the soul of the needy from the hands of evil men. The word of the Lord. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. I love you, Lord, my strength, my rock, my fortress, my saviour. My God is the rock where I take refuge, my shield, my mighty help, my stronghold. The Lord is worthy of all praise. When I call, I am saved from my foes. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The waves of death rose about me. The torrents of destruction assailed me. The snares of the grave entangled me. The traps of death confound, confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my anguish, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. Of his temple he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. In my distress I called to the Lord and he heard my voice. Back to God's hands now, and to the Lord of the Gospel. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews fetch stones the, the, the Jews fetched stones to stone him. So Jesus said to them, I have done many good works for you to see, works from my Father. For which of these are you stoning me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for doing a good work, but for blasphemy. You are only a man, and you claim to be God. Jesus answered, Is it not written in your law, I said you are God's? So the law used the word gods of those to whom the word of God was addressed, and scripture cannot be rejected. Yet you say to someone the Father has consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming, because he says, I am the Son of God. If I am not doing my Father's work, there is no need to believe me. But if I am doing it, then even if you refuse to believe in me, at least believe in the work I do. Then you will know for sure that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. They wanted to arrest him, but he eluded them. He went back again to the far side of the Jordan to stay in the district where John had once been baptising. Many people who came to him there said, John gave no signs, but all he said about this man was true. And many of them believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Just a few thoughts on today's very powerful readings. Most of us at um, one time or another have been guilty of talking about others behind their backs. The reasons are many. We may not want to embarrass them by confronting them. So instead of telling them about it so that they can remedy the situation, we whisper to others who spread it even further. At times we repeat rumours in a whisper because we're not sure of the degree of truth behind them. Instead of asking the person involved about the truth of the matter, we keep the gossip mill grinding away. And of course, the story grows more as it spreads further and further. Also, passing on secret information can be a way of getting even with someone. Two friends had a falling out. One tells his or her side of the story and purposely leaves out half the truth. The one who hears the story is naturally inclined to take the side of the storyteller and think critically of the other. Honest people can be the object of whispering at times because they always tell the truth, even when it's inopportune or not advantageous. They are frequently disliked by others. Others wait for an opportunity to entrap them in a momentary lapse of character. That way, they don't look too bad themselves. All of, all of us have chinks in our armour when it's pierced. Whispers, rumours, talking about others behind their backs can lead those talked about to the brink of despair. Ultimately, those who engage in such things are in the end the losers though for a while it may seem that they've triumphed. Truth generally has a way of coming out and the innocent are vindicated. God does not abandon his own. He rescues them. He is always, always on the side of truth. And now let's turn to the Lord in prayer as we remember all those victim survivors of abuse, abuse of all kinds, but particularly in my heart it's clerical abuse today and I want to ask the Lord to, to comfort those who are victims and to bring to justice those who have perpetrated and to heal the wounds in the whole of the church. 
praise to you, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all consolation and hope. Be the refuge and guardian of all who suffer from abuse and violence. Comfort them and send healing for their wounds of the body, soul and spirit. Help us all and make us one with you in your love for justice as we deepen our respect for the dignity of every human life. Giver of peace, make us one in celebrating your praise, both now and forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In my anguish, I called to the Lord and he heard my voice. Father of true justice, creator of all that is good, we come before you to acknowledge the many times when the voices of those most in need and most vulnerable in your sight were not listened to, were not heard. On this day of Lent, when we follow your Son in his hour of need, we seek repentance for the members of our Church who committed crimes and those who did not use their proper influence to respond adequately in the face of evil. We pray for every victim survivor of abuse, the cross they carry through life, and the need to be believed. Give to your Church an urgent understanding of the need for a compassionate response, so that the little ones whom Christ called to his side may always find safety in the life of his Church. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mercy of this water and this wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we then accept this our meal in the remembrance of Christ and his body given to those of us who have been torn in soul. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for us, by your power, a source of healing and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. By this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, son of the living God, and by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your dead, dead life to the world, through your life shed on this holy body and blood for all our sins and all the evil, that we always face with your promises and never have to depart it from. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Thanks be to God. Amen.
for those of you at home, we, we now make our spiritual communion. My Lord Jesus Christ, who for the love which you bear for us and remain night and day in the blessed sacrament full of compassion and of love, awaiting, calling and welcoming all who come to visit you, I believe that you are present in the sacrament of the altar. I adore you from the abyss of my nothingness and I thank you for all the graces which you have bestowed upon me, and in particular for having given me yourself in this sacrament, for having given me your most holy mother Mary for my advocate, and having called me to visit you in, mind, in my mind. I now salute your most loving heart, and this for three ends. In thanksgiving for this great gift, to make amends to you for all the outrages which you receive in this sacrament from all your enemies. I intend by asking you to come into my heart also to adore you in all the places on earth where you are least revered and loved and the most abandoned. My Jesus, I love you with my whole heart. I grieve for having hitherto so many times offended your infinite goodness. I purpose by your grace never more to offend you for the time to come. And now, miserable and unworthy though I be, I consecrate, my, consecrate myself to you without reserve. I give you and renounce henceforth, that I give you my entire will, my affection, my desires, and all that I possess. From henceforth, dispose of me and of all that I have as you please. All that I ask of you and desire is your holy love, final perseverance, and the perfect accomplishment of your will. I recommend to you the souls in purgatory, but especially those who had the greatest devotion to the most blessed sacrament and to the most blessed Virgin Mary. I also recommend to you all poor sinners and those who are suffering from illness and disease and are fearful. Finally, my dear Saviour, I unite all my affections with the affections of your most loving heart, and I offer them thus united to our eternal Father, and beseech him in your name, in love of you, to accept and grant them. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. O God, from whose hand we have received the medicine of eternal life, grant that through this sacrament we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I know we're just about to begin Holy Week, Sunday's Palm Sunday, and many of you will, um, will miss the fact of being able to have palms on Palm Sunday. Just a thought. If you've got a 
privet in your garden, a little tree somewhere nearby, perhaps in a park or somewhere close by, just get a little bit of a branch and bring it to the Mass on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. I'll be celebrating Mass here in the cathedral at 10 o'clock. And bring those palms and we'll ask God's blessing on the palms that you have in your own home. On uh, Holy Thursday, I'll be celebrating Mass at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So it will be good if you can join, join me for that celebration. Good Friday, we'll celebrate the Passion of the Lord at 3 o'clock in the afternoon too. And another thought, perhaps if you have a, a crucifix at home, a cross at home, you won't be able to kiss the cross that we have here in the cathedral. But you can, you can venerate the cross in your own homes as we gather together to, uh, to, to, to celebrate the Passion of the Lord and, 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 and our redemption. And then at the vigil, which again I'll celebrate at three o'clock on Saturday afternoon, perhaps you, want, you would like to have a, a candle and put it in your, in your window, in your front window, as the sun sets on Saturday evening, just to remember the vigil. And remember also all those who should have been baptised and received into the church this Easter. That will have to be postponed till later on, but we pray for them and we remember them and we pray for their perseverance. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. The God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people. Keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in the peace of Christ.